Bonjour! My name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV, the O de V edition. This is day 24. We've made it to the end of the Costco Wine Advent box. This is it. The last wine waits for us inside. Let's see what we get. All right, if you're new here, you've got a lot of wine lessons to watch. This is the last one. You can go back to the beginning, check the playlist in the description, or maybe this little flyout card will work for you. All right, if you're not new here, then you know what we're doing. We're about to open the last wine. This is December 24th, 2021, Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Okay, let's see what we get. Down here in the corner, there's my box, empty. We've got the 24, let's open it up. What do we have? Oh, it's a sparkler. Okay, we've got a sparkling wine from France. All right, this is gonna be fun. Nice way to end the box, Costco Advent box. I appreciate that. Cool, let's give it a taste. Sparkling wine from France, why? Aren't I calling it champagne? Well, it's not from champagne. All champagne is sparkling wine, but not all sparkling wine is champagne. This is an important distinction. Champagne are sparkling wines that come from the Champagne region in France. Other places in France make sparkling wine, as do other countries. In Italy, it's called Prosecco. In Spain, it's called Cava. In Burgundy in France is called a Cremant de Bourgogne. In Alsace, it's a Cremant de Alsace. And in the Loire, it's a Cremant de Loire. There's lots of sparkling wines produced all over France, but there's only one region called Champagne. Okay, makes sense, right? Yeah. Now, we've got this weird wine. We don't know what the grapes are. If it was made in the Champagne style, it would be Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. Three grapes, one white, two reds, to make the most luxurious of all white sparkling wines. But we don't know what this is. That's okay. We don't care. We could guess. If it was from the Loire, it would be Chenin Blanc. If it was from Alsace, it could be something completely different. If it was from Burgundy, it would probably be those three grapes, uh, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay. All right. Now, the label does say Brut. That is a dryness indicator rather than a sweetness indicator. Brut does not mean dry. The French word for dry is sec. So, why does this say Brut on it and what does Brut mean? Well, when they're finishing up the bottle, they have a little extra gap here before they put the mushroom cap and the crown and the cage on. They've got a little extra gap. They will add a little bit of wine back to fill the bottle back up to the top. The extra wine that they add is called the liqueur de expedition, the, the dosage, the dosage. If you don't have any sweetness in there, then they'll put a different name on than Brut. So I'm gonna go through the list from least sweet to most sweet. Let's see if we can remember this and keep up. We've got San Dosage, so nothing, or Brut Nature, completely natural, no sweetness in it. Then you've got Extra Brut, Brut, Extra Dry, which is sweeter than Brut, dry, demi-sec, which is halfway dry, and do. Okay, those are the levels. But the two you really need to think about and the ones you'll find most often, unless you're buying champagne from a specialty producer or you're finding it somewhere oddly in a really nice store somewhere, is Brut and extra dry. If you like a little hint of sweetness in your sparkling wines, you want extra dry. If you want them to be quite dry, very austere, they will be brute. 
And if you want it more than that, bone dry, you would go to extra brute or sans dosage or brute nature. That's how you get it completely without any sweetness. And those wines are super searingly dry. Whew, there's a lot to talk about with sparkling wine and I can't cover it here. It's just too big of a topic. Maybe I'll do an entire lesson on sparkling wine or a series of lessons on sparkling wine in the future. If that'd be interesting to you, leave me a comment down below and I'll think about doing that. Okay, let's open this thing up and taste it. Okay, day 24, this is it. This, we've gotten to the end, woo! Okay, good job. Good job, everybody, getting this far. This was actually kind of hard. There's a lot of wines in here. All right, sparkling wine. Now, obviously, you can have, you can drink this out of anything you want. You could drink it out of a little sippy cup if you wanted. But here are the three wine glasses I have. This is the wine glass that I have been using, and I will continue to use this because I don't want the wine glass to actually change the character of the wine when I'm grading it. Here's a champagne flute, which are quite popular for drinking champagne, but I actually prefer these old 1920 style coupes. You know, uh, you never see a big tower of flutes, that would be ridiculous, but a tower of coupes and then toasting with a coupe. I just think a coupe is cool. I like that old 1920s, 1930s style and look. Anyway, those two are gonna go back there. Let's open up this. Now, opening a bottle of sparkling wine. It always has this foil on it. You can tear that off. We don't need our wine opener anymore. We're done with that. Okay, there's a method to this. You put your thumb over the end of the cap, pull the wire thing down, and then count six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's always six. Take the cage off and keep your thumb over the top. The number one case of eye injuries in America is flying sparkling wine corks. Don't point this to anybody. Don't fling it off. It's fun to pop, but you could hurt someone. All right, PSA is over. But honestly, I don't pop these crazily. I don't want to waste any of my sparkling wine. If you've got a champagne, it can be expensive. Now, grab the cork. Twist the bottle, not the cork. Don't put your thumb underneath it and try and pop it off like that. Just twist it and you'll start to feel it come up. Go very slowly. Wait for it. Don't pressure it. And there you go. A little hiss. Doesn't need to be a big pop. All right. Pour it in your glass. The bubbles, by the way, are called the mousse. When grating sparkling wine, the bubbles should feel finer. The finer and tighter and smoother, rather than open, big, and expressive, the smaller and tighter the bubbles, the better. So that's something to think about. Okay, looking at the color, it is yellow and it is pale. All right, now I'm gonna swirl it and we're gonna smell it. Whoa, man, that just gave me a big old burn. Whew, it must have been the carbon dioxide from all those bubbles. It just popped me in the nose. So that was weird, but Second smell around. It smells a little bit sweet, a little bit like, maybe a little bit of peach. Maybe nectarines, it's actually becoming less aromatic. Maybe because that CO2 blasted my nostrils. 
but I'll go peach. And um, it smells nice. I'm going to give it a 7 for aroma. Okay, now let's taste this. Dry or sweet? It's dry. What's the body? It's light, as you would expect from a sparkling wine. What's the acidity? It could be tart or crisp, but I think this is fresh because it's not overly acidic. It's dancing a little bit on the tongue. I'm going to give it a six for acidity. Balance. Alcohol is fine. I don't notice it. The acid is good. There's no tannins. Sugars are fine. It's good balance. And I will give it a 7. Nicely balanced. Now, complexity, flavors, and depth. After the first taste, it tasted slightly metallic to me. That is not a complex aroma you want. Just as if yesterday's barnyard wine that was probably the most barnyardy of all wines I've ever actually tasted. I think I overscored that, but I was so amused by the barnyard. A little bit of barnyard, a little bit of earthiness can be actually nice. That one was so barnyardy, it was over the top. Anyway, this has a slightly metallic flavor in the complexity. Let's see if I get that again. Yeah, I do. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's going to go into the finish. But I do notice something. There are some flavors. I'm going to give it a five. Because it's not flavors I smell. It's flavors I taste. It's complexity, but it might be bad complexity. <clears throat> but it's still complex. Now the finish, it's medium in length, it could be longer, and does it give me a horrible aftertaste? No. Is it nothing to get excited about? Yeah, that's true, and there's that metallicness to it. So I'm going to give that... Oh, I hate to be so harsh at the end, but we must stick to the rigor. Three. Okay, I'm going to go do my math. Here are my final scores for our final wine of the Costco Wine Adventure box. Day 24. We're done. Aroma, seven. Acidity, six. Balance, seven. Complexity, five. Finish and length, because of that metallic finish, a three. 28 points, add that to 50, 78 points. Let me go grab Sarah. Let's see what she thinks about this wine. Hello. Ooh, sparkling wine. Well, has some thick glass, isn't it? All right, I'm not a huge fan of carbonation. So we'll see how this goes. Oh, well, it smells delightful. Although a little bit <laughs> salty, like um, like the seashore. Maybe it was grown in limestone. Too many bubbles. <laughs> That's not bad. I mean, all those bubbles, <clears throat> I have a hard time swallowing carbonated beverages, but um, I didn't mind that. Cheers. Okay, that's it. We've made it day 24. We've done 24 little wine classes here on YouTube, and I hope you've enjoyed them. I have too. The Costco Wine Adventure Box has given us a broad range of really odd wines. Have they all been bad? No. Have they all been great? No. But that doesn't really matter. It was the intention, the intention of the holidays, something to do fun 
for you and for me, and it was fun for me. I hope you enjoyed it too. If you liked this episode, give me a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing. I've got more content that I want to put up on YouTube. I've got an entire 37-day trip in France where we spent three weeks on the canals, traveling throughout France, boating along. If you're interested in seeing what that's like, I'll be putting up those videos in the next few weeks. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a break. Don't expect anything until after the new year. One last treat for you. If you find sparkling wine a bit too austere, too dry, I suggest buying a bottle of Chambord. I'm not sponsored by them, but I like this. It's a raspberry liqueur. Or you can get a bottle of cassis, which is made out of black currant. Add a little thumbnail of that to the bottom. And the wine looks like this. Top it with sparkling wine and you've got a Cure Royale. And so for Sarah and I, I'm not going to say a tutelaire. I'll say a biento. See you soon. And Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and cheers. Cheers.